set up and ready to go and recording and we oh good thank you so much so um so thanks everybody so you know each meeting we try to highlight uh the work of exceptional artists here and in, in our community and and we've invited speakers to come in and talk about the mediums that they use uh their journeys and and the body of work that they produce uh and last month you heard from fatima taylor who is just a, a wonderful artist and a great resource to us all. I, I think there's something in the water here in Columbus that makes for great artists, including all of our fellow members that are that are here on this call. Uh, and tonight is a, a real special treat for us. Uh, we have, uh, and following in a, a great Columbus tradition of James Thurber, we, we've got a, a wonderful cartoonist uh, as a guest speaker. Mr. Jeff Stoller. Uh, Jeff is the syndicated editorial cartoonist and creator of the national comic panel called Moderate, uh, Moderately Confused, uh, which is uh, should be my banner uh, over my work as well, Moderately Confused. Uh, he has been an editorial cartoonist for the Columbus Dispatch, the Cincinnati Post, and the Columbus Citizen Jour uh, Journal. Uh, Jeff is a native of Ohio. He was born in Bell Fountain. Uh, Jeff is a graduate from the Columbus College of Art and Design. And he's also very active in a number of organizations, giving back his time and his expertise to the community. He's vice president of the Central Ohio Watercolor Society and serves as a board member uh, for the Ohio Plan Air Society. So uh, everybody sit back and I hope you enjoy our presentation and, and Jeff, the Zoom is yours. Okay, thanks. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, good, good. Um, well, the day started a little bit differently, but since I am moderately confused, the, today turned out to be almost totally confusing in, in many aspects, um, but uh, understanding Zoom is one of the, my major pitfalls. And um, I was gonna take you through the house originally um, and show you a lot of the inspiration that hangs on our walls here in the house. I'm on the third floor, which is my studio in German Village. And, um, oops, and let's just hang that up. Sorry. And um, so what I'm, I'm going to do is instead I'll sit here and show you a few things that are unframed that I, are still inspirations that are not hanging in the house. But um, I have a large collection of art and I've always been intrigued by cartooning art um, along with watercolors. But um, Back when I graduated from the Columbus College of Art and Design back in the uh, mid 70s. Um, and I do want to make mention the the one uh, one of the panels that somebody's tuned in from uh, Dayton, Ohio, that was an old classmate of mine, Sazro Mahanbre. He's the one that looks like he has uh, went to Cancun, his background's a beach. Uh, anyhow, hi to Sazero. I haven't seen him for ages. It's so much fun to see old classmates. Um, anyhow, the um, my inspiration has always been cartooning. And so I, I went through, I have boxes and boxes of cartoons. And so I thought I'd share with you some, some actual cartoons. This was the very first cartoon that I ever received and I, I had read an article and I'd never heard of Smiling Jack before. This was probably one of the last years this, this comic was ever in existence. It was done by a cartoonist by the name of Zach Mosley. And when I was in school, my very first year in the early 70s at CCD, I had seen an article in the dispatch and the dispatch said, if you send this guy 10 bucks, he'll send you an original cartoon panel. So I was very intrigued to see how big cartoonists were. 
because when you see them in the paper, they're tiny. They're they're very small. And so I was very intrigued to see how this guy worked and then just how they applied their blacks. This guy looks like he used a quill pen and, and filled it in with brushwork. It's, it's beautiful lettering, everything about it. I have no idea anything about this cartoon or even the characters in it. But I was intrigued by the technique and the uh, and how how it went from there. So by by that, I then started to write other cartoonists that I'd love to know a little bit more about. And I wrote I wrote Dick Brown. Dick Brown did Hagar the Horrible. This is a this is a sketch that um, he did. Um, and this is this is interesting because I don't know if you can see down here in the corner. I, I was told this later. My wife and I years later went and visited Dick Brown while he's still alive in um, in upstate New York. And um, and his wife would make a mark on here if she liked it. One of the sons would make their mark if they liked it. And different people that were involved with the gag would actually do a little marking. And that's how, what would indicate to take it to a finished panel. Or this was probably a Sunday comic strip, which I thought was pretty interesting. but. What I found almost more interesting than that was literally across the street from Dick Brown was Beetle Bailey. And I didn't realize that they were neighbors. And so he lived across the street from Dick Brown, Mort Walker, and his boys. And so between the Browns and the, and, and the Walkers, they created this comic strip called High and Lois, which still runs as, as does Beetle Bailey. And of course, if any of you know the history of Beetle Bailey, Beetle Bailey is Lois's brother. And so they, they created this whole two panels, two different comic strips and ran gags across the street back and forth to each other. And I just found that so interesting. And then as you found out more and more, as time went on, I, I found out that, uh, well, I can show you. This is actually, this is an original Dennis the Menace. And it's signed by Hank Ketchum, but not really. It's actually done by this guy, Marcus Hamilton. He did all, he still does all the daily Dennis the Menace panels. And a different artist, uh, Ron Ferdinand, does the Sunday Dennis the Menace. And Hank Ketchum died several years ago, but his son is still involved with it. So I've, I found that pretty interesting that it, it, it goes in a family and it's in such a way. Uh, the comic strip Nancy. Nancy was originally started back in the 40s or 50s by Ernie Bushmiller. Then Ernie Bushmiller passed away and they wanted to keep the strip alive. So this is written and drawn by a, an artist by the name of Jerry Scott. Jerry Scott also does, man, this is now all taped up. This, uh, I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah, you can't see it very well. But that's Baby Blues. And so that's written by Jerry Scott, but then inked by another cartoonist by the name of uh, Rick uh, Kirkman. And so they both communicate with each other. And Jerry now writes that. But also Jerry doesn't just write baby blues. He also writes zits. So there is a three-way 
there you got Jerry Scott doing writing for both Baby Blues and Zitz. He formerly was a the cartoonist for Nancy for several years, about 10 years, he said. And so there is that, and that's drawn by Jim Borgman. Jim, uh, Jim and I were um, across the street from each other in Cincinnati while I was there for about 21 years in Cincinnati. And he was the cartoonist at the Inquirer and I was at the Post. We both did editorial cartoons, but we both uh, started our comic strip uh, there in Cincinnati. Uh, let's see, what else do I have that I pulled out? Oh, here's another family of, okay, I met down in Cincinnati. This guy used to write the uh, comics for, for many years of Archie, Jughead, Betty and Veronica. And then I found out through him that there are about a dozen different artists that do Archie. And so I got this comic book. So there's a comic book done by Dan DiCarlo and there's the original art. So you can see that's a little bit bigger. And that's the original art. They've just pasted the masthead in the little, the comics logo up there, but it's all nicely brushwork. And it's done by an artist that's since passed away. His name is Dan DiCarlo. And I met, met all these people through the cartooning network. The one of the biggest thrills I have, and this is, I have the original hanging downstairs, but it's too big and it's huge. It's a huge piece of art. It's about double this size. And it's in a frame, it's, it hangs on our wall downstairs, but it's a beautiful peanuts. And I got to meet uh, on a, two or three different occasions um, being with uh, Charles Schultz. And I still stay in correspondence with his widow who lives in Santa Rosa, California. A uh, good cartooning buddy of mine years ago that did editorial cartoons was Dick Loker. And he took over and started doing Dick Tracy years ago. So I got this from Dick. And it was one that I always wanted because I wanted him talking, Dick Tracy talking on his two-way radio. And that's, that's one of his original comic strips. And then here I've corresponded years ago. This is an original Dick Tracy done by Chester Gould. This was back in the 40s though. And he's wrestling in the first panel, he's wrestling down one of the best villains, one of my favorite villains, Flat Top. And look how big that, that, it's a huge piece of art. And I think it's pretty interesting just how much there were a team of people. Somebody else was a letterer and did all the lettering. Somebody else did backgrounds and somebody else did the original pencil work on it. And somebody else did all the inking of it. So it was a whole team of people that actually worked on these comics. Uh, I just have a couple more quickies here to show you. They're just kind of fun. This is. I, I get, had a chance to meet uh, Matt Groening uh, on a couple different occasions. And this one says, what, 1992, that's a long time ago. But that was a nice little sketch that he did for me of Bart. Our kids would go to cartoon conferences. We'd all go as a family and it was so much fun because the kids would take little sketchbooks with them and go up to the different cartoonists and get sketches from them. And um, the one time that I remember that uh, Matt Groening was at a uh, one of these conferences, we were out in California and uh, the kids both got, our daughter's name's Maggie and Maggie got a little Maggie Simpson. And then uh, Alex, our son got a, um, Kind of great Bart. It's big long burp. 
that he's spitting out. It's a fun, fun drawing. I hope the kids still have them. Never can tell. So anyhow, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about, um, hopefully Robbie's got our uh, slides put up and we're going to, I'll just say like next or something like that. And we'll we'll look at um, we'll look at images. Oops. <clears throat> we can start with this one if you want, Robbie, or we're, what whatever. Uh, that was a technical mistake. I'll okay. I'll re re We had a lot of trouble with this today, communicating Zoom and, and trying to get images. Uh, we're not, I wanted them to be in a slideshow format, but uh, we were having some issues. Oh, here's my signature. We're on our way. <laughs> okay, so I, I'll just, uh, we can look, this is an old moderately confused, uh, the dates, the dates are down in the bottom. So you can kind of see um, that was done four or five years ago. And um, yeah, moderately confused was, uh, was a comic that actually I got grandfathered into. And that what that means is that um, uh, about 18 or 19 years ago, um, the syndicate came to me knowing that I wanted to try my hand at social uh, social commentary in a comic panel uh, style. And um, there was a cartoonist by the name of Jim Barry and his comic used to appear in the CJ years ago on the editorial pages. And it was called Barry's World. Well, he wanted to retire He'd been at it for 40 years. And um, so he he stepped aside. They had a pretty decent sized client list. And so they just called me out of the blue one day and said, would you be interested in following under uh, with uh, Jim Barry's um, panel? And I said, oh, absolutely. And they said, you, you can call it whatever you want to call it. I... Uh, <clears throat> I wanted to have, wanted to do the social commentary. Uh, they said that uh, the, um, the panel would, uh, would run six days a week. I have to work uh, for this particular, for moderately confused, I work uh, uh, about a month ahead of time. So I, today I was working on stuff that's in the middle, middle or late March is when that will run. Uh, so I work about a month or six weeks ahead of time on all the gags. So they have to, social commentary has to be something that's not um, gonna disappear in the way our minds work today. You know, things, we, we forget about things so quickly. And um, so they have to be issues that are gonna be kind of evergreen in a sense. So uh, certainly technology is one of the easiest crutches I have with moderately confused since it confuses me most of the time. Um, it's, it's a wonderful um, thing to have behind me for, um, for coming up with gags. So let's see, where do I wanna go with this? Um, so anyhow, I, I took over in about 2002 or 2003, uh, took over Jim Barry, who retired, and um, and that's where it started. And um, I've, I've kept it going this long. Nobody knows how long it's going to go. Newspapers are fewer and fewer these days and getting smaller and smaller. So we'll see. Anyhow, I have about uh, 20 of these uh, moderately confused. We'll go through them slowly. I'll try to talk. Some of them are in color. Uh, this is the way they look when they're black and white ink. This is basically what I provide 
the syndicate once a week, I send them six gags every week, every Wednesday, I send them six, six, um, six more finished panels. They actually color them there. I've sent a template of what I think things should look like and they know my style. Uh, I do hand, I do color all of my editorial cartoons, but I only do three to four of those a week. So it's a little bit easier to do those than to do on top of this, to do six, six of these panels. So next. Another, uh, just a black and white, but, uh, but probably about, uh, it's a couple of years old. Look how I hid that hand gesture. He's just waving, I'm sure. Next. Um, the simpler, the better. I have a good editor that I work with. My uh, The Andrew McMeal syndication is the name of the syndicate that I'm with. They're in Kansas City. Uh, they got bought out. My original one was in New York and it was called United Media. And it got bought out by Andrew McMeal about uh, a dozen years ago or so. So, uh, but the same editor that I had at United Media, I was able to get him to follow. Uh, follow. So he works in Kansas City. He moved from New York City to Kansas City, and um, he 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 enjoys it. And um, I'm sure he works with a lot of different cartoonists, not just me. But um, I come up with gags. I usually send them a sketch, and pretty soon I'll show you a couple of those sketches. Next. <clears throat> you know, day-to-day -day life is, is kind of where moderately confused goes. And I, you know, so many things are very reflective of my own life, uh, but a lot of them I read constantly. I'm, I'm always trying to come up with ideas. I have little sketchbooks and pieces of paper laying all around my desk. I'll show you some terrible sketches that just have lots and lots of markings all over them, just because I'm not quite sure if that's the way I want to go. And I I have a little bit of time to think about a gag of how to how to create it and finish it. Next, uh, this th this is a good example. This is a, a cartoon I did last year, and and. Um, there's several in, in this batch of uh, that you're going to see that were all done during the pandemic period. So if you think back that I created the six weeks earlier, we really had just come into that. What is this we're, we're getting involved with? What is coronavirus? What What is it? Or is it only going to last two weeks? Um, they're telling us to wash our hands a lot and to uh, not touch things and uh, you know leave the groceries at the front door for a little while. Don't touch the mail unless you use rubber gloves, all this kind of stuff. So nobody knew where, where we're going and we're still trying to figure it out. So anyhow, this was a gag that I did probably the very one of the earliest ones I did of the coronavirus. And if I was to redo it later, those people sitting in the office probably should have masks on too. <laughs> Next. Another coronavirus type of gag that was done there, that was done in June of the last year. And um, it's, um, it's pretty self-explanatory. My favorite type of gags if I can do something with no words at all, that's the best. Here I was able to use one, two, three, four words and, and make it make it work. And that's and some of that's the credit of having a really good editor that looks at what I have and says, yeah, and he's he's 15 years younger than I am. So he can kind of look at it through a different generation's eyes and kind of help me uh, use language that might 
take me beyond just uh, the uh, older generation. Next. Another coronavirus type of gag and tying it to uh, guns. Yeah, next. You know, I just figured at this point in, you know, we're all coming up with different ways. You gotta, you have to come up with, I probably come up with at least 50 gags on at least 50, maybe more gags uh, about uh, coronavirus or the situation that we're in and how we're going to adapt to it. So I just figured at this point, this was done in July of last year. And um, here's looking at the new model of cars. Next. Um, I saw somebody use this gag just recently uh, using with all the snowfall we've had recently too, about how you had to walk miles in the snow to get to school. And I hear I just figured this little kid and he's got, he's got blue gloves on like sanitary gloves. He's got a Lysol thing in his backpack. He's got his mask on. Mom's there with a mask waiting for the school bus to pick him up. Uh, what a time we live in. Next. Here's just, just kind of getting bizarre, you know, but I, I love this. This is one of my favorite cartoons I did last year. Just, you know, there are so many times that we have walked, I, I, I have eyeglasses all over the house. Now I have masks all over. I have them in the car, a glove compartment, in my coat pockets, just to always have a mask with me when I step outside the house. And it's so often that one of us here in the household will walk out and say, wait, I got to run back inside and grab my mask. So I just figured, hey, getting abducted by aliens, wait, mask. Next. And here we are, we're trying to relocate. I uh, got a new job, got to relocate from the dining room to the front bedroom. <laughs> Everybody still works at home. That was kind of fun too, because I had to make it work that he was walking up a flight of stairs. So I made it, the, the stairs actually turn halfway up and go the other way. As they do in a lot of homes, they just don't do it in this house, but next. And then of course we've, we had this, this uh, you'll see when I get to, um, You'll see my political bend certainly as soon as we get to my editorial cartoons, but here I can, I do occasionally get into a, a, a light touch of uh, politics with moderately confused. Uh, I get criticized for it a lot for having politics on the comics page, but uh, but it just seem, seems natural. And it's so much fun to draw people walking through a beautiful, fall evening. Next. And just another play on, play on, perfect play on words. It's almost a, it's a gimme. <laughs> Jeff, do you um, go through your day and things just pop in your head and you have to stop and write it down? Like this is going to be in the next one. Absolutely. Absolutely. Every, every day is like that. I keep, like I said, I have pads of paper and, and I have my phone nearby. I use that little notes um, thing in my phone all the time to write down an idea because I'll forget it as soon as uh, somebody else starts talking to me, uh, you know, or a new idea will pop in. Uh, I, I write down like germs of ideas and just like themes of ideas. I'm, I'm trying to think of what I, I was working on today. Um, just the idea, some idea, and then, the, you know, it sometimes will grow a little bit if you think a little bit more about it. Um, 
And of course, we had the Mars landing this afternoon. I thought, eh, maybe there's something there. They don't want us up there. So, you know, yeah, I do keep notes. Next. <clears throat> okay, so this is an editorial cartoon. This is what an editorial cartoon. I, it, it's, I was showing Robbie today and I'll show you all in a little bit uh, when I show you sketches. Uh, I, it basically just goes from a vertical to a horizontal. That's the format for most editorial cartoons. Um, so my format is, this is the editorial cartoon format. And uh, when I have a lot of time in a day, so editorial cartoons are turned over and whatever I did today is for tomorrow. So it's, it's, it's instantaneous. Um, and if I have a lot of time left, my typical deadlines around three o'clock in the afternoon, um, sometimes four o'clock uh, because I'm an hour delayed because of the they're an hour early, uh, later in Kansas City, so I can get it to them. But I wanted to get it out to all the newspapers as quickly as possible, and they generate it very quickly. Everything's done electronically these days. So the coloring on this, I did myself. I use Photoshop. And if I have a lot of time, I just sit and play with colors there. I stripe their shirts and their I don't think any color uh, repeats itself. Everything's a little different. It's just so much fun to play if you got lots of time with um, with uh, inking and uh, drawing a cartoon. I, I usually keep a, a cartoon fairly simple so it's easy to read. Like I don't clutter it with a lot of background. I usually try to keep it formatted uh, so it's just the characters talking if they're talking at all. Next. Uh, Trump. Trump was, you know, I just, it was so, you know, it, this this year so far is, it's a lot harder. I'm just having a harder time. I got a president that doesn't want to be out in front of the limelight all the time. Trump wanted to be in the news every day and wanted to be about him. And, uh, and what he's done for this, this country. And so it was, it was so easy to do things, but it was always about him. Um, but it was a lot of fun. He was a lot of fun to draw. And I didn't draw pence too often, but this pence, that's probably one of my best pences. Look how, it's so few, minimal amount of lines to it. But I think you can tell it's Pence. And of course, the white hair helps. Trump exaggerates himself a lot. And so if I look back over four years of Trump, he's changed a lot. But his, uh, a lot of his features are similar, but they change. Next. Here's a side view of Trump. Just, you know, he's a person that I totally disliked and just never could never wrap myself around this guy at all. But, um, and I know I'm, I'm, I heard I've gotten so much hate mail. It's, 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 it's unbelievable. But as much hate mail as I've gotten, I've gotten lots and lots of, you know, congratulations. Just, you hit a home run with this one. So, you know, you, you, it's a two-edged sword always. Okay, next. There's a there's my favorite type of cartoon. No words in it, just the father figure, just hand it over. You played with this thing way too uh, too much. And I love that little Trump face. I mean, it's so simple, just so minimal amount of lines. You just put that big shock of hair out in front, tuck those eyes up underneath that thing. And it's just so much fun to draw. He's a joy. Next. 
Uh, look at all the words in that one. I could divide that up in several weeks. If you decide to vote for Trump in November, will you need to sign this liability waiver that you won't hold him for America does? I don't know. Boy, that took forever. I'm sure uh, I had editing help on that probably, even to hone that down a little bit. But it is, it was another day's cartoon. Next. Oh, and Kaylee. Kaylee McEnany was just so much fun to watch. I'm, I'm a big C-SPAN follower. So I would tune in uh, almost daily. I still do, uh, just to see what what the White House, what what's going on in Washington, because they're so middle of the road, and you get in discussions are both ways. And I love the fact that you hear from both sides, and it's it's that unfiltered type of. Uh, it's probably very boring, but uh, I would sit and I could ink a cartoon and listen to C-SPAN in the background. And she, her press conferences were just a riot. <laughs> she was, her nose should be five times that long. <laughs> okay, next. And then this was the period of time where we were, uh, they were starting to knock down statues. The, the country was uh, up in arms over statues. What, what happens to them? Are we destroying pieces of art? Are we destroying uh, monuments of history? Uh, do they represent a time past? Are they today's? What should we do? And I just figured, hey, you put them in a museum that's going to, you know, that self-described itself. And that's where they are in the American Museum of Statues that are an insult to freedom and democracy. Jeff, I have to say, sometimes on Facebook, when you post these, I missed the news of what happened. And I, you are always on top of the latest happenings. <laughs> and you nail it and i'm like okay what happened okay and then i'm there googling like a statues for <laughs> for insult or whatever and then right. i find the news i'm like oh that's what happened in you you are i can tell you're probably on the news all the time getting well you know that's a couple couple different points about this particular cartoon is in in other cartoons somewhat like it is i my thinking on so much of this is that I want a cartoon to be um, kind of more reflective, not of the politicians, uh, but of the people and how they affect daily life, uh, through my eyes at least. And, um, and so that's kind of where, where they're a lot of these ideas come from, although Trump got in the way, and so I did draw a lot of Trump, uh, but maybe just through my eyes. Uh, the, the other thing I was gonna bring up just real quickly is, you know, this was done probably uh, late summer or something like that, but I was, I was just starting with my watercolors, starting to put a lot more figures in the watercolors. And so I got into this thing of really quickly doing these little gestures of real quick brush strokes to create bodies. And this was a good example. I could have drawn a lot more people. I was probably, I was probably late that day and was not coming up, but not a lot of colors in this either. So it, I probably put it together pretty fast. And um, sometimes the idea will take could take me three or four hours before it ever gels that this is the direction i want to go uh to finish a, to do a little drawing pen and ink drawing and then color it uh, the pen and ink drawing maybe at the most would take me no more than 15 minutes to do uh 
um, something like this one. Uh, but, uh, and then to color it another 15, 20 minutes maybe. But uh, some of them, I can take more time, some less, but I'm, I'm pretty efficient on being not a lot of details, just the essentials. I did put a lot of steps in there. Next. <clears throat> This was a fun piece and I, I worked with the editor definitely on this one just because I wanted this to work to the best of, of math problems and, and, and to parallel it with COVID. And so, you know, I just figured you know, Tommy goes to school on the school bus with 30 students and attends six classes with an average of 22 students in each class. And then, how many people has Tommy infected? <laughs> of course, a, a lot of people would say, well, the younger people don't affect, infect people, but that wasn't going to work. So this, this idea had to work. I thought it did. It was fun. Uh, here's a simple one, but, you know, a wordless one that, you know, it was football season and I love doing anything with uh, using somebody else's gag. <laughs> so I was there, I, I actually, and I didn't even credit or say apologies to, of course, Charles Schultz has been dead for 25 years. Um, but here I just, I thought it got the point across and you put the little uh, coronavirus, the little bacteria is on the football and and I thought it, you don't know if you're going to have to have a full season or a partial season. And I thought it was, a, it, it was a cartoon that worked. Next. <clears throat> this was one of those ones that you do, and I couldn't tell you. I'm, I, my guess is that maybe I didn't draw that guy. I, I think I drew him once and then just took him and Photoshopped him five more times <laughs> and just uh, wrote the words in. I, I really was probably quick on that one. But I thought the point was uh, during, um, you know, this was just, uh, we, we criticize so much and, and I just thought, I'm just a proponent of we need fewer guns out there. I, I think it's too late for that, but uh, I'll still fight it. It's a mission. Next. Yeah, <laughs> just fun, fun one with just the uh, monster under the bed. Now he's out intimidating voters. It's so simple to do those like that. That's great. Thanks. Next. Uh, counting down to Christmas now, inauguration day, another. And that little calendar that is up there, that was actually, that was a Chris Leeper painting that he did that, that he had just posted on Facebook and I thought, I love that. I, I wrote him and said, oh, that's a great painting you did. And uh, I never told him that I kind of redrew it and put it up there on a post on a calendar. I think it's the painting he used in our workshop. <laughs> oh, it could have been. There you go. Should have put a signature in the car. Yeah. <laughs> Chris is one of the best, didn't he? Yes. What a good guy. Next. Okay, so these are a little bit older cartoons. They uh, they drift back a few years, but uh, I I had them in my uh, well of uh, already scanned art, so I I threw them in. I thought they were evergreen enough that they seemed to work. College tuition is always an issue and it will continue to be for years to come. 
it's one of those evergreen issues that come around every year that you can always poke fun at. Next. Uh, this was right at the time that the uh, they were doing that march in Washington, D.C. Um, and um, and um, so somebody saw this uh, cartoon, a, a couple people, and, and made large, I, I had CNN on or something, and I saw my uh, cartoon blown up really big and uh, people protesting, holding this sign up in the Women's March in, uh, I think it was, in DC. Next. It's just a simple one. <laughs> Next. And there's another nice wordless one. Next. <laughs> it's always fun to draw the White House, too. It's just kind of one of those things that's just kind of fun to draw. And probably every time I draw it, it looks a little bit different. Okay, we're into watercolors now. So I don't know what the parallel is, if there is any. It's a, it's a wonderful distraction that I have that I, I can, uh, I can uh, if my deadline is, uh, if I've met my deadline that day on cartooning, I would love to pick up uh, just some paper and start uh, painting. If I have sunroofs up here on the third floor of the house. And if I see the sun shining and somebody's outside painting someplace, I'll, I'll go out and paint with them or, or just go out and paint by myself. But I love to paint with people too. So a lot of people know that. So they've called me on different occasions and said, if you're not doing anything, let's go paint. So this was a, um, this was, um, I started doing musicians several years ago and I, uh, this was at Natalie's in Worthington. The guitarist on the far right is uh, Tom Carroll, Jim Ruff on the uh, drums. I don't know who the saxophone and the keyboardist is, uh, but um, I've started this project now at the Natalie's in Grandview that uh, coming next month or so, um, I'm gonna, I, I've blown up watercolors and to like poster size and we're decorating their uh, Natalie's in Grandview with some of these posters or, or some of the watercolors I've done of musicians. And I've done a number of them from, from Natalie's. Uh, usually I would take a little, do a little thumbnail sketches while I'm sitting there, but many times I'll take photographs too so I can get the staging right, some of the lighting correct. Um, uh, this was probably about, um, <clears throat> uh, most of my watercolors are not terribly big. They're about uh, nine by 11 or 12 inches is usually the pad I, size I work on. I like to work with a fairly large brush. So I don't work in a lot of details. Next. Uh, this was just uh, earlier this week, Monday, President's Day. Uh, uh, good friend, uh, Kevin Buckland and his wife, uh, Pertan, he had called on Sunday and said, uh, it's President's Day, are you working? And I said, man, man I'm, I'll go out and paint. Where do you want to go? Yeah, it was cold that day too, Monday. So we went to Easton Mall and sat in the, sat in the little courtyard there and just kind of did um, 
painted for a couple hours just talked and this is the first time we'd been together in a long time so it was nice to nice to see him get together wear masks and stay socially distanced and everybody in the mall pretty much all had face i think you had to have a mask on inside the the mall area the food court area we got there about an hour before it opened so we just kind of sat there and talked a little bit and had a cup of coffee and and, and painted um I've, I've been trying to get my my goal is is always to get looser and put more expression into my work at least that's where i'm at that's where my head is at now so that's that's pretty that's a pretty quick sketch uh, it's small it's probably about six seven inches by six seven inches something like that next that was also the uh the same day the, the woman and she just had this gray bodysuit that just kind of went up and it was a big hoodie that and she had her mask on and she was sitting there texting and had a bag of food next to her and her her boots were up propped on the on the table she was there by herself she didn't know i was painting her i i this was probably a painting that took if it took 10 minutes it was probably two minutes too long <laughs> but i did it pretty quick it was fun next i did that in a little sketchbook uh this is a piece that i did uh, real recently uh i might have did it last weekend i i had been looking around for some other uh, photos that i had shot of musicians uh, that I could possibly do. And I've always, this is, um, a lot of people thought it was Ella Fitzgerald. It's not, it's um, Mary McClendon. You know who, anyone know who Mary McClendon is? She's a jazz singer that, uh, she's been around Columbus for a long time and uh, an older woman that um, has a beautiful, rich voice. And that day she was, uh, she was just a block from, I'm, I'm a block from Barcelona, the restaurant. And um, so I'd walk down on a Sunday evening, had a glass of wine and sat and listened to Mary McClendon and Tom Carroll together play one Sunday evening. And I took a couple photos of her and uh, she had this uh, really fun little, neck piece around her that like a shawl over top of a, a dark uh, pantsuit that she was wearing. Um, this was a painting that if I spent, I didn't spend more than an hour on it, but it's pretty quick. It was fun. So I'm using, uh, I'm using a, a big brush. I'm using like a, uh, like a one inch fat brush, square watercolor brush. I've also started to use a pocket knife. So the white scratching that you see in there and a little bit in her hair and maybe in the uh, outfit that she's wearing is, uh, is I've just kind of, the paint is still a little wet and I can work it, move it a little bit. And so um, that that's, just something I did with that, just to experiment a little bit. And I kind of liked it, it was working. So I left it alone. I'm not gonna do anything else to it. It's sitting over here on the floor. <laughs> so I can look at it every day. Okay, next. It's That one's too small for the OWS. I measured it shortly after I did it and said, oh, because my I'm always like meeting the minimal size for OWS. They enter anything in an exhibition, and the the size is uh, I think 121 square inches, and that one probably just fell like 118 square inches. If I put a little black or something behind her, maybe it might work. Um, I swim every day, and I was coming back early in the morning. And this was also this week. And I saw this, I was just 
turned down a German village alley and uh, headed home. And, uh, and I saw this runner and it was a snow covered day. We just had, it was cold out. And uh, I just, I loved the, the mood of that morning and the snow on the road. It hadn't been shoveled yet, but this guy was out running in it. And uh, so I was in my car and I quickly, I'm fishing around in my pocket trying to get out my phone in time so I could snap a couple pictures through the front windshield of the car, hopefully not hitting the guy. <laughs> I turned right before he, he continued. He was way out of sight by the time I uh, shot my two, two photos of him and then uh, went on down. He went on down the street. But uh, that one is probably 11 by 14 inches, something like that. It was just a beautiful day. It's just so nice out. So there I'm using, I don't know how much scratching I'm doing on it, probably not very much, a little bit. I see a little bit in the trees in the back, uh, but I've started using um, Ed Kitchen gave me, does anyone know Ed Kitchen? He's a watercolor artist. I don't know if you can see that brush or not. This is, look at the hair. The hair on the brush is there's only about six hairs in this brush. Six hairs in the brush, and it's probably it's an inch and a half long. So there's like no no stability to it. So I'm I'm do, using it in the in the foreground to get all these little marks in the road, just kind of dipping it in some dark watercolor and just scratching with it the best I can to get that a little bit of that scruffiness up front, the detail. Uh, next. <clears throat> it's back at the uh, food court. That was somebody else that the girl that got up left and somebody else sat down in her place. And he, you know, people, I love winter time with clothing. People's clothing is like, five times bigger than the people are. This guy had these pants that looked like he had five pair of pants underneath it. And this jacket is just huge on this guy. And he's sitting there eating some, uh, uh, some Chinese, uh, some Asian something food from the food court. But it was, it just, it was another fast, quick uh, one. He didn't know I was doing painting him either but uh, I just I love his posture it's so funny how people's posture will just you know draw you to to find something interesting about somebody you know I I, I was telling somebody recently about because I have painted Tom Carroll the guitarist I painted him probably four or five times and I like painting him because he's such a tall guy and he seems to sit in a very low chair or low chairs just hit him that his knees come up unproportionately higher than most people's could sit at. So it, it's almost like he, he cradles his guitar with his knees. And it, it just I just think it's the proportion, the way it's set up, is makes it so interesting to uh, look at and and with this guy and all that clothing that this guy had on sitting inside this food court i was in a sweatshirt and i had my coat off and a mask on and half half the clothes that this guy had on but uh he didn't seem to mind it Uh, this is across the street. I have painted more pictures. It's so much fun this year to have. I can sit in my little front foyer of the house and I look right across. That's exactly what I'm looking at. And every day this whole month, we've had so much snow and it's been so cold that it stays on the ground. The last couple of years, the moment it would snow, I would get out there and, and take pictures. And because within an hour, the snow would be gone. The kids would just pretty much wipe it off the hill with their sleds. 
but this year it's staying down. And, and the amazing thing is we can sit in the house at 10 o'clock at night and still hear kids laughing and playing over on this little hill that's across the street. And you just see, you just see dozens of kids and families because they're hungry to do something outside. But it's so much fun because coats are so big and bulky and 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 I really love this composition. This composition to me, that guy in the foreground, I put in at the very last moment. He was just crossing the street getting out of his car and he was kind of like he was big in front of me. And I just thought, oh, I see this direction of these people going up the hill and coming down the hill and going back up the hill and coming back down. And it, there was just a cycle to it that just seemed to work. And uh, I, I just, I really like, of all the compositions I've done of, uh, of that snow hill this year, that this is probably one of my favorites. Next. Oh, maybe that one's in that, my favorite. No, <laughs> this one's all make believe. This is, I just I just did it for fun. I it's a small painting, small painting. But I have this I have this uh, about two blocks from my house is a framer, and we've become very good friends because I go over there all the time, and she has some of the greatest old antique frames, and so I knew which frame I wanted before I painted this piece. And I, so I painted this piece knowing that the proportions were gonna fit this little frame. And so this piece is probably five by seven inches, but I love the, the people walking up the hill. It's just a simple little, it's, it's adapted from across the street, but uh, it's, it's really not, I don't know what it is. I, I didn't even look, I, I sat up here in the studio and actually painted it just, just, I could use that little brush I was showing you earlier to get these little pieces of grass coming out of the ground. And, um, and here again, I, I, I would use a square edge, maybe three quarter brush to get most of that painting done, except for that little, little brush. It's a, it was a very simple painting, but I just, it, it looks really nice. I love winter scenes. It's so much fun. Next. Uh, this was a piece I did for competition at the Ohio Plein Air competition in Cincinnati. This is at the Finley Market. This was um, two years ago. And I've used it now. It's been in a couple different exhibits. It's just a, it was a, it was a fun piece to do. I just kind of, there were people walking in front of me all the time. And so I would just adapt this person's, the two people on the left were behind the, were the, the farmers or the produce salespeople. And the other three people are just people that happen to wander by at different times. And I just said, oh, that's a good character. I'll put him in, put her in. So it was fun. And it was in the fall. Those are pumpkins or gourds. Next. <clears throat> this is over at the Sayota Audubon. I went over, um, it was last winter. Um, it probably about this time or a little bit later, we just had a nice sunny day and a good friend, uh, Robin Roberts, he was in town and called and said, you want to go paint? And I said, yeah, let's go run across the side of Audubon's only uh, about a mile from the house. So it's very easy to get to. This was just a fun little piece. Uh, a lot of it's gouache. Uh, the orange in there is all gouache. So I've, I was playing a little bit with gouache in that particular painting. Uh, most of it's watercolor though, but the orange is definitely gouache. Next. Uh, this might be the last painting. This was, uh, this was in Maine two years ago. 
two years ago, we went up to uh, Maine. We uh, we met somebody through the, uh, my wife uh, at the time was working with the Columbus, uh, Columbus Symphony. And uh, we met one of the, um, one of, somebody had had a place up there, <laughs> beautiful place, beautiful place, and uh, and I just loved Maine. I would go love to go back in an instant and go up there and paint again. Uh, we actually were able to go out one day and go out on Monhegan, which if it was it was like Monhegan Island in Maine is this incredible island that is uh you know how people would spot uh birds on on this island you spot artists painting you would look around and you'd say oh look there's there's two artists down there oh there's one over there and you would see artists all the time painting and um we had um the ohio plein air society had uh asked uh, an artist by the name of Tim Horn, who's from California, to um, to um, come and jury one of our uh, exhibits last two years ago, and uh, I knew that he was coming. I didn't know who he was or had no idea who he was, but this morning that I painted this thing, I had walked. This was only like you could almost throw a, 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 a stone and hit the house that we we're staying in was right around the corner. But I had just come down early in the morning. We were leaving that day. And so I said, I just wanted to do one more painting. And uh, so I went down and took my easel and, and set up and, and, and painted this little shack, um, um, this little inlet. And, um, and uh, this other guy walked by me and, and he looked at my uh, painting. Oh, no, that's nice, he said. And he walked on by and I looked over about 20 minutes later and he set up with an easel across the street from me, painting the opposite way. And so I finished this painting and I walked, I put my easel away and the backpack on and I walked across the street and I said, uh, and he was painting this beautiful little oil painting. And uh, I said, are you staying nearby? And he said, yeah, we're I just finished a workshop here on Monhegan. I said, oh, just on Monhegan two days ago. And uh, I said, we're from Columbus, Ohio. He said, I'm from Yellow Springs, Ohio, originally. And uh, we started talking a little bit more and uh, he said, but now I live in California and I'm Tim Horn and I introduced myself and it was so funny that we had run into each other. And I said, well, you're coming to jury a show. What do you think of this painting? <laughs> <laughs> so, That's good. Robbie, do I have any more or is that it? Looks like that's it. That's it. All right. Yes. So we can, uh, we can talk now. Mm -hmm. yeah oh look there's still some people left <laughs> <laughs> you never I, know when I you get back in great. Thing. it was great jeff oh, thanks. fantastic so this is sazro sazro mahambre we were classmates yes ccd back in the early 70s right yeah, Jeff. Jeff, I mean, not Jeff. Chuck wanted to be on. You know, he missed. Uh, he had another thing lined up much earlier. I said, "Well, yeah. I'll talk." You know. Yeah. Great. Fantastic. Jeff, I have a question. Um, when you're when you're working on your pieces, um, you mentioned at one point that um, the lettering and the art and the other things are done by different people. Do you do your own lettering? I do. I do all my lettering with this micron pen. Um, I do all my uh, inking with a Winsor Newton Series 7 number 2 brush. That's what I use for all my inking. And I have dozens of them over here. I've never thrown any of them away. I just always kind of reshape them and hope that they come back to life next time I want to use one. I. I said I'd show you. So this is the size that I work. 
And so that's the size that a moderately confused would be. And then this is the size that an editorial cartoon would be. So I cut all my papers all the same size. It's very easy to file, organize, keep everything together. So I just know that if, if it's drawn this way, it's a moderately confused. If it's this way, it's an editorial cartoon. So let's see, I have, I told you, I, so here's a, here's an upcoming. So this is like an idea that I was playing with. So this is what I do. I just take sketches and I fold them. I use reused paper on, and it's just, it's actually an old statement that I had. And that's, I don't waste any paper. I use everything over and over again. And so there, I've, on this one, I've actually reworked the wording a little bit on the gag so that hopefully it works better. And um, let's see what else I have here. So is that the stage where you send them to your editor? I, I would send them, yeah. And, and he is not, my editor is not going to say, He's not going to say, no, you can't do that, or yes, you can. He's just going to make a suggestion that he said, you know, maybe it would be better if you said it this way, or you would, you don't need to put this, or you've, more often than not, you've misspelled this word. <laughs> Jeff, what kind of pen was that that you said you use? Um, the pens that I use. So all the scratching that you see is usually a, a that's a, a Micron Zero One. Okay, thank you. Real tiny, and my lettering's all done with an eight. So the Which what? is an eight a Micron. Uh, okay. Is my lettering. Jeff, when you're doing your plain air painting. Do you have a preference for watercolor uh, paints and brushes? Um, there's my bag of watercolor paints. So uh, no, I don't. <laughs> and specific. I love it. <laughs> if you were to see, here's my tray of yesterday's. If I did something yesterday, I don't clean up very well. I just kind of keep it as is and my backpack is always right next to me. So I always am ready to go whenever anyone calls. Jeff, how many newspapers use your cartoons? I don't know. I really oh. don't. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. I know it's, it's such a, it, it's like so hard to explain to people and I just, I'm always excited when I do hear that somebody's running a cartoon, mm -hmm. you know, but I don't know. I know that I've been in Detroit before and seen their comics page and they, I know they run moderately confused in color because they actually run all their comics in color. So it's always fun to see uh, your comic in a paper in color. That's different. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm contracted to do six moderately confused a week. I'm paid a flat fee for so many. And then I have so many clients that buy me individually. So I, and then editorial cartoons is through the same syndicate. And uh, I'm contracted to do three a week with them. And uh, I'm paid just a flat fee. And then I have, again, so many clients that buy me individually. When I say a flat fee, it's because I've been sold for years and years through a program that is like a package. And it sells to a lot of smaller papers. But the smaller papers are the ones that are holding on. And, um, and so I seem to do okay with smaller papers, smaller than like the dispatch. Uh, so a, a, a small town paper that will run uh, moderately confused or my editorial cartoons 
would also buy this package and inside that package you'll have puzzles you'll have uh you'll have a couple editorial columns you'll have a horoscope you'll have a sudoku puzzle a crossword puzzle and maybe you'll have uh uh six comics comic panels uh, not like mine they try to get them all differently I, i'm trying to think in my package uh there's a cartoon called The Born Loser that's been around for a long, long time. It's sold in that package with uh, Moderately Confused and uh, uh, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, Alley Oop used to be. There are a lot of different uh, comics. There's a one that I really like. It's called The Griswells. And it's uh, these <laughs> Griswells and it's bears, these two bears. Um, and it's kind of the wildlife, but it's very humorous, and it's um, it's um, it's a kind of, so I the answer is the short answer is no, I don't even know. My sister sees you in Denton, Texas. Oh, is that right? Wow! Oh my gosh, how's she doing in Denton, Texas? Oh, well, her heat's not on. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! Oh, that's good though. I'm I'm always happy to hear when people have traveled someplace and have uh, you know, I used to work for USA Today several years ago, but USA Today has cut back so much and they don't even I don't even think they have an editorial page any longer. I I don't even, I haven't seen a USA Today for a long time, but I was with USA Today for almost twenty years. Um, in my lifetime, I've done, I, I got to do one cover for Newsweek years ago. Hmm. That was oh. uh, back in, uh, during the Clinton administration. Um, and that was, that was a real treat to do that. Only time I've been in a, a, a large national publication and on the cover of the magazine. So that was nice. Um, anymore, I just, uh, do my thing and love it every moment it, it's so much fun to uh get up every day and climb up to the third floor of my house and and sit up here and just kind of you sweat on on a piece of paper until something drips out <laughs> idea and uh hopefully it's a good one uh here i did I, I just did. I don't think, I don't know if I posted it or not. I, I forget, but I, I post a lot of my editorials on Facebook since a lot of people like to see them. But here I did this one just today. Um, I did one yesterday on Rush at the last minute. It was Rush. <laughs> I, thought I, did, I did this and I, I really liked it. I, I thought it was more, more to the point. Yeah. And, um, and uh, so that's fulfilled my uh, week's obligations for um, editorial cartoons. So I won't be doing that tomorrow. But every day I'm working on ideas and working on different, different thoughts, anything. So Jeff, is your house going to be ready like James Thurber's house? <laughs> or when, uh, have you willed it already to <laughs> Columbus? <laughs> it's a beautiful house and it's, it's in... It, German Village is such a great neighborhood to be in, and I, I, my wife and I just love being down here. And, you know, I love the fact that um, that we have this wonderful 22-acre park that's across the street. It's our front yard, and uh, the city mows it for us in the summer. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so that's 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 a uh, that's a perk. Cool. I would like to ask, uh, like, do you uh, draw only with micro pen, or you, you use any other color for the illustration? No, I I, I use a brush primarily for all my uh, all my work. I use a, a Winsor Newton Series Seven number number two brush, and I've used that for many many years. And uh, the colors? And I use uh, Dr. Martin's black ink. Can it still get them? And they still make it. So I'm, I'm happy. And I use just a two ply Bristol 
a hot press to do my uh, do my uh, inking on for the uh, for the cartoon, and then I I use a variety of different uh, for painting uh, arches or uh, Fabriano. Um, uh, what's the other one? Oh, Kilimanjaro. I just uh, there's a, there's the there's that sketch I did of the uh, there's that girl here. I did the uh, what did I do here? I did this. Oh, there's the sledders. I did another oh, sledding. But I love the tree. The tree, and that's just looking out the front front of the house again. So much fun. I just want so, to say I love your work, and I love okay. um the watercolor, the last watercolor of the water and the boats, because I'm a boater. Oh, but uh, you know it's really hard to make me laugh, and you had me busting a gut so many times tonight. Oh, <laughs> just wow. want to tell well, thank you. you. <laughs> no, thank you. It's really good. <laughs> Okay. That's so much fun. Well, uh, you know, it, it's, it's so nice to be, uh, I, I love doing what I do. And, and, uh, and I think any of us that paint or do this, you know, you gotta love it because it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's the best. Oh yeah. Yeah. Thank you for speaking and showing all your work. It was fabulous. Thanks for hanging on. I know. I uh, usually don't. So this is like pretty good. It's like nine o'clock or something. Well, <laughs> thank you, Jeff. Round of applause, sir. Hey, Jeff. thanks, David. You're an inspiration. Sazaro. Where, where are you thank staying you, there, buddy? What? What's that? Is, that? is that Cancun behind that, you? No, no, that's my backyard. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. Don't you love Dayton? I was just I just turned on the Zoom and they say, hey, you want what background do you want? You want is you know <laughs> you want in Hawaii? You want here? New York? You tell me. I just clicked on that. Yeah, that's the first time I've seen you can you choose a background. Yeah. yeah, I've not used it. I've never done that before. I I've yeah. seen it for the first time. I didn't know you could do it. I don't know. It looks yeah. like you got a nice hand though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great, great, great. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wonderful work. Bye. Thank Thanks you. for sharing with us. Thank you. It was great. great. Bye bye. Really an inspiration. Bye. -bye. bye. Thank you. Thank hey. you for coming, everybody, tonight. Hey, Kathy, just a couple of really times. good. A good program. Yeah. It was, thank you so much. It was a great program, Kathy. Thanks. A uh, couple of reminders we have Nathaniel Underwood is going to be our speaker on March 18th. And he is a figurative painter. Yeah, he serves on the faculty here at, at uh, Columbus College of Art and Design. Uh, if you look up his work, I think you'll really enjoy it. It's, it's, it's just some beautiful, magnificent work. So that's for March 18th. Uh, for anybody that's on the call, we're always looking for new speakers. So if you have a speaker in mind or an artist friend that you would like to see featured in these sessions, please drop me an email at davidengler at me.com and I'd be happy to recruit and set that up. So if you know of somebody who you'd like to uh, feature on, on one of our presentations, just uh, uh, reach out to me. I'd, I'd love, to, love to connect with them. So thank you. We've Thanks. had some really great speakers every time this year. So. Yes. yes. Yeah. Very well done. That was um, fabulous. That really was really that. good. Yeah. Well, that yes, speaker. My next door neighbor. His, their first house and our first house. They're next door to each other in Eastmore. So, <laughs> known Jeff a long time. Wow. 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 Thanks. It's an inspiration. Thanks for, yeah. Thanks for Robbie for suggesting Jeff. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Robbie. Yeah, thank you. Good night. Good night, Good night everybody. Bye. Bye. See you next month.